I'm here with the artist Donna Huddleston to mark her first solo show with Simon Lee Gallery, titled Donna Huddleston in Person. Donna, who was born in Belfast and grew up in Australia, where she studied art and then theatre design, creates fantastically alluring drawings, evoking bewitching worlds that combine elements of fantasy, drama and memory. There's a strong presence of doubles threaded through this show, and I wanted to start by asking if that was a conscious intention as you were creating the works. Yes, yes it was. Um, I was thinking a lot in the, about the theatrical term, the stand-in, which then led on to thinking about doubles, whether it's a body double or the double of an actress. I guess the double and the stand-in can be used, can be exchanged as ideas. So I then began to double, use that idea to double, to use the idea of doubles within works, sort of within individual works. And then also I double works with, with another piece in the show so that they reflect each other or there's something about one drawing that works within another. In terms painting. of motifs that are yeah. threaded through? Or? Motifs, subject, compositions at times. Like this, this brighter, this piece, doubles with another called the stand-in and they're both performers kind of in a, in a, you know, being kind of supported by the plinths or armature and, you know, waiting for some lighting or they're standing in for an actress. And so I use structures within certain of the pieces that became the double. That brings me to the role of performance and ritual in your work. The settings feel very stagey and constructed and there are poses that the subjects are adopting. But yet you still somehow are prepared as a viewer to suspend your belief and the settings lure you in even though they're very theatrical. I often think of the figures performing within the composition and um, I was thinking of myself a lot during the show as all the works being a double for myself. Um, and I was thinking a lot about self-portraiture in a way. But when I start to make any kind of image of a, a figure, I do begin to think of it as a performance. And so I start to think of almost prosceniums. This is a good example of, of, of that sort of, I think of structures, theatrical kind of artifice that can help the sort of the, the performance sort of of the composition, I suppose. But um, there's a theatricality to most of the works I, most of the figurative works I make. I mean, all of them really to a degree come, come from, they almost feel like projections to me and they are kind of individual performances that sort of are composed of many different elements and many different, um, I mean, I use lots of different references, but I build them up almost like a, a series of prosceniums or stage sets within the, within the sort of construction of the composition. And they sort of develop as I go and it's sort of one thing responds to another and I have an idea of where I want to begin, but usually it's when I start to draw the composition, which I tend to do directly at, this, at scale, the scale of the works, that I begin to build sort of the, the, the image, really. And it keeps changing as well. You actually called the show Don Huddleston in person, which kind of suggests that you're holding out the promise of delivering the real Donna Huddleston. <laughs> um, but yet we're presented with this sort of hall of mirrors. Um, and yeah, I wondered what, why it was called. Yeah, I mean, this is fairly real for me because it's, I've sat alone in a room for quite a long time making the work. So I feel like it's, it is, this is the real me. But the show, the in-person came from when my show was originally meant to be in New York, just before the pandemic began, um, I, be, I was thinking my, that show was going to be much more of an introduction to my work, of my work to New York, so it was going to be a very different show. And then the pandemic hit, and then it, the date moved, and then I wasn't going to be able to travel. And so I thought of the name Donna Huddleston in person, uh, in, in, in a playful sort of theatrical way. And then when that show moved again and then was moved to London, but a year later, 
um, I kept the title and just began to expand on what in person means, you know. Yeah. Is it, it could be a talk show, it could be, you know, it could be in a theatrical sense a stand in or the doubles or, you know, is it really me? And then I began to think about portraiture. But because of my, my kind of desire always for this interest in performance, the portraits sort of became very performative and removed from, from sort of looking at me, looking like me. And I tend to never draw from one image anyway, so they became, um, you know, they don't, I don't look like this figure, but, you know, I'm very much in there to some degree, probably more in, you know, the gesture. But you are in all of them. I think so, yeah, yeah. I, 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 may, I think I connected more with that idea, um, th making this body of work. I mean, I usually am in all of them anyway when I'm making a piece, because whether I'm physically looking at a position of a hand or a gesture in a mirror for my studio, I tend to, the way I make work, the pace of it, the time it takes, I tend to inject quite a lot of, I think, feeling, which, which you know, I feel in some ways everything could be a self-portrait. Um, in some of your recent shows, you've mined personal experience or memory, um, such as the girls' netball team, um, yeah. or your memory of being an exhausted student at drama school. Yeah. How present is autobiography or memory here? That's a good question. It's not. It's it's more fluid here, I suppose, less direct. Because in the, the Warriors, you mentioned the netball team, that I was looking at a very specific point in my adolescence. And then for the exhausted student, a very specific period. And this, um, I think this encapsulates both of those things. And this maybe is a step on from when I was a theatre student. And it's the idea of possibly being an actress, possibly performing myself. So in that sense, I feel in some ways, this is more personal and more personal to, I, to things sort of currently now. I think I've always been interested in performance, which led me to theatre school, but I've also always been interested in the possibility of performing myself, which I feel I do more so now than, than I did before as a theatre designer because of the way, the figure, because of the sort of figurative works I make. The figures always seem to be dominated by women in your work. And it, to me, conjures a sort of idealised all-female world or yes. modern-day Amazonian kind of utopia, even though they're not necessarily warriors, but they all seem to be strong women, uh, like you have in personal development. Um, but is that related to the fact that you are so present in your work or yeah. for another reason? I think so. It's sort of what I know best, you know, it's, it's what I can relate to the most. Um, I do have a great love of, you know, all type of performers, but I particularly like sort of the women of Vassbender's films or, you know, there's a, there's a certain type of female performer I'm drawn to. It's, but I think it's just because of what I know and what I was saying about the way I have to feel an image to, to connect, to draw it, it just, it just makes more sense. I mean, I have drawn men, but I tend to, I tend to, the female figure is, is something I connect more with. You were drawn to Carandash pencils, colour pencils, mm. quite recently. For the, the Warriors drawing was the first, the 2015. To what extent are they instrumental in creating this distinctive ambience in your work, this sort of slightly dreamlike setting? It's interesting because my work really shifted in lots of ways with the pencils, with uh, the textural quality. At the same time, I started to use autobiography. Uh, I started to think about my time in Australia. It had been 18 years since I'd lived there. By, by, the, by that time. And so the, the sort of the, the, my memory of growing up there was so distant that it became quite textural. And that kind of coincided with seeing a drawing by the artist Kai Altoff at Michael um, Werner Gallery. And um, 
it was the textural quality of pencils. I don't know if it was Karen Dash he was using, but it was this, this textural quality. And I thought maybe I'd used watercolour before then. And I had begun to feel like I'd wanted to, to sort of use another material, but I'd always wanted it to be drawing because I loved working on the paper. And so I think the pen, then I started playing around with pencils. And, and so all these things married in, in the drawing, the warriors which I think the method and the, the, again, the amount of time it takes to build layers in colour pencil and it all kind of, time sort of played a huge part in the investment, I think, the investment of the compositions, the feeling, the, the, this idea of memory as a kind of tangible, became a tangible thing in terms of colour and light. So it was quite a big shift in my, in my practice. At that yeah, time. the textures are so notable. They're so incredibly detailed. Do you create them as you go, or do you have a very distinct idea of the textures you want to overlay? It's a little bit of both. I sort of know what colors, I, I mean, things change right up until they're, they're, they're finished at times, although they look so precise. They, they do develop, they keep developing. But I have, a, I have a certain idea, like I, for this one, although it was one of the last things I put in, I always wanted this sunset. So that was all just white until the very end. And then I started to, I was almost thinking of the sunset as a, 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 ba a projection, a backdrop, something behind her that was, um, you know, building the scene although it can become something else and hopefully does. And that, that I had an idea I always wanted to put in, but things start to, the proscenium was something I added and things build and change. Certain things I, I always kind of, I, for this, I always knew I wanted these to be blue. I wasn't quite sure what was, what was going on in the rest of it until, except for, the, except for this projection, and so it, it changed, they develop, which they surprise me all the way along. They don't, um, it's not like I can ever, I'm always on my toes yeah. making them. In terms of your process mm. um, and this extraordinary detail, attention to detail, um, it looks like it could be very meditative. How, how do you work and are you working on several works at the same time? Are you thinking of them rhythmically, you know, how, is, how does it work? Yes, for this show I was working on them all simultaneously and I thought I'll, I like to sit with the larger compositions for a longer period of time so I, I, have, I tend to put them all up in my studio so I can, and, and just pencil in the composition so I can sit with it and begin to feel what colours it may be and begin to sort of have a Almost that I get something in my mind's eye about the, what the image um, can become or the possibilities. You know, working on this many drawings all together, which is what created this idea of doubles and reflections, I think, for me, and sort of intensified that experience because of working on them so simultaneously. But there is a difference in register, isn't there, as you go round? Well, the methods, uh, I've got the silver points the silver and just points. some uh, exactly. graphite line. Exactly. And, and so sort of the intensity varies. Yes, I like to think of it shifting or, you know, at times I think of it like, a, you know, an album, a concert album. And I listen to a lot of music when I'm, when I'm working and often certain albums or certain musicians attach themselves to, to bodies of work and I play over, I almost get locked into, I have to hear this 10 times today. You've included a collage, haven't you? Yes. And this is a new development? I mean, I've always played around with collages, especially as a designer, you kind of um, use it as a very quick, a quick design tool, a quick way of, of getting to an idea or image. But I've, and I've used it within my practice for myself, but I haven't ever, shown a collage as a finished work. And this particularly is a collage of a drawing, so I've never, that was the first time I'd done this, partly cut a drawing, and, um, and then use one of my references that I had in the studio. Who are some of your artistic inspirations? And you mentioned Fassbinder, um, but 
are they all pinned up on a board in one place? How does it work? Yes, but they're not particularly always... I have quite a lot of art books, but really it's everything from performers, things I look for, like I think, you know, I want to look at brutalist wall textures, and so I have lots of, you know... It's, sometimes it's just textural, I have lots of images of textures. I walk around London and take photos of things. I, you know, look at a particular performer and look at lots of images. Sometimes it's just colours. Um, and then it will lead me to a particular artist. Um, and then I'll look at... I was reading, actually, a, a memoir that Hockney wrote, which was quite straight talking, which I quite liked. It was quite factual. I was reading that at lunchtime in the studios at one point. I actually looked at... I mean, I always look at the same artists like Kai Altoff and... Um, because these drawings are so incredible. Um, but I did, you know, I, I looked at Magritte too, quite a bit, uh, which I always find his visual, his visual language, you know, so captivating. And um, his early work particularly, I find. So I, I look at lots of, I look at a lot of different sources. Photographic books, there was an amazing book on the Teddy Girls. Um, photos of the original Teddy Girls at Ken Russell, the director took and then I was given a book on Rosemary's Baby, stills from the film, which are extraordinary. So I was looking a lot at, you know, images, imagery and stills from that. So it's a real, I watch films, I read, it's, it's sort of, it comes from everywhere really. I also wondered, by the way, how easy it is for you to leave white it was, it was that's a challenge. It was interesting because I just left the three because I just thought I didn't want to keep mucking it up. I was touching it too much, mm -hmm. so I thought I'll leave those till the end. And then I'd made that separately. And then when I put it on, and I hadn't had those three done, I suddenly realised it needed to stay blank. And I really questioned it. I questioned it quite a lot. Will they look blank? Yeah. <laughs> but then compositionally, it just really, they really wanted to not, not, not coloured in. They could be texture glass, well that was the idea, it was, a text, it was a version of a textured glass, an impression. And then for me it just seemed to, to I, couldn't, I couldn't change it. It jumps out at you because there's not a lot of just white space in your other... In no, your and I wanted this work to be quite different. Yeah you know, lighter, kind of less worked. I know that you've got the colour piece on top. But the figure is done very differently to... Yeah. It's posed still, but it's not wearing a similar, the sort of costume element is missing. She's got a very different feel. She's from a different time, actually. She is. She is. She um, was one of the last figures I did, so I think it's sort of a... She's sort of moving away from this world, maybe, and into a into another. I mean, that feels very much to me like, I mean, I'd never put a drawing on a drawing before either in that, in quite in that way. So in a sense, that's a, I'm taking on from the collage. I don't, it just seemed to me once I placed it on, it sort of almost sucked into it. Like, like I thought, well, that's, it had to stay. That has to stay. Um, but the, the, what I read is a chrome, but you said, isn't, it's a man. It, it is a man, actually. I know he's got big, he's got long hair. That was more because I thought, wouldn't it be good if his hair was defying gravity? <laughs> and it was, became as more of a compositional. But, I mean, for me, that's quite fairy tale like or nightmarish, or hallucinatory, or something. That he's this head, this disembodied head, is sort of over watching this woman who's sitting having her cigarette, sort of oblivious or. Yes, I think of them both in bed, not necessarily the same beds, two different beds. Um, and yeah, they're just two very extreme, you know, sort of emotions, I suppose. She's indifferent, perhaps a little, I don't know, she looks a bit cross. Yeah, she does. <laughs> She's definitely very intense, and he is intense in a different way. He's having a sort of panic of some description. Um, and I don't really, I mean, to, uh, I just, didn't, it surprises me as well, the drawings, and I have, and I, and, you know, I think I'd like people to read them. So he was, a, it was going to be a woman, actually. No, I always wanted an aerial, an aerial kind of view of somebody in bed who was sort of upright then. So I guess in that sense, I do always play with the picture plane. Mm. Um, you know, into, I don't tend to, 
work with perspective, but I, I tend to work with, um, you know, playing around with what's flat, what's two and what's, three dimensions. Yeah, yeah, within, within, within a piece. But you had conceived, had you, the idea that he sort of was an echo of your chrome or the other one? I think when I made the chrome, yeah. I felt like they were, they were, I feel like she's actually more attached to the background here. Mm. But I can see why she, he, she would attach to him. I think she definitely attaches to this drawing. You were saying that's the first time you've taken a figure out of a fairy tale or a... Yes, directly, and used it in a work, which was quite fun. <laughs> did it just insist on being drawn somehow, or did you sort of consciously think, oh, I think it would be interesting to explore a character? It sort of insisted on being drawn. It was, um, I watched the Snow White, uh, the original, in the first lockdown, I think. And then I just, when I did get back to the studio, I felt like I really wanted to draw the, the, that incredible scene in that original Snow White when she's on the way to, she's, she's running through the mountains and the, the witch and um, escaping and she's being hunted and it's, it's raining and it's, I mean, the animation's extraordinary. And so I really wanted to draw her and I drew, I've, draw, I've got a drawer full of drawers of the witch, but nothing has worked as that. Yeah. And then she just, I, 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 I left her and continued making a lot of other works and every time I'd open my plan drawers I'd see her and she'd make me laugh actually and I just thought well she's a real counterpoint to the to all this poise and control and that that's within the other works and so she somehow she cast herself I think she reflects all the figures actually and as an archetype I think it's you know it reflects that, that I guess is a female archetype um, she's definitely in all of the works. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but I think it, it really, she somehow, you know, kind of punctures, punctures, uh, you know, the sort of hold of the other works. Yeah. In a good way. Definitely. Yeah. Because mm. there's, there's so much uh, theatricality or glamour or, you know, you are walking into a stage set, and although she's, uh, she's not stage, she's film, but. It does, it does definitely form a really stark contrast, I think. Yeah. This, this crone and link with that. Yes, yes, and you see her, almost see her when you first walk in too, so she's, her presence is quite, um, you know, is, is seen quite, quite quickly within the works. But yes, no, so she, it's something I hadn't done before, but it was, like the collage, so it was very enjoyable. Yeah, actually, to add it in. And again, it's nice to have a different quality of, of um, the touch of the pencil, I suppose. And way. I know that you're not making these connections, but for me, I'm seeing her, and then I'm seeing your rising fawn with what for me reminds me of Dorothy. And yes. then I'm, I'm thinking Wizard of Oz and witches, and you know, it's taking yes, me down yes, that yes. path. But that's interesting. I yeah. mean, it's very. That's you know, that's wonderful to. See to see that it's red in these different I'm sure very different ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's just funny. But um, you had mentioned that this is actually taken from... Uh, it's a little, it's, it's this very young Liza Minnelli. Yes. Where she's, she was sitting next to Judy, which is on the Judy Garland show, and they're wearing matching outfits. So I just had it as a double image and as a theatre set because they're on the Judy Garland show and it's a very old school, sort of old school showbiz set. So it was a very quick thing that happened when I was making a double of that drawing actually, right. with the piano key. Yes. And then I decided I wouldn't make a direct double, but I wanted to, I didn't want to lose the piano key. So that's when I started playing. And I put the little, Ju I put the little Liza on and it just, but like a little musical interlude in yeah. the show, a little musical number. And yes. so were you listening to showbiz music or have you got like heavy rock or something? It's very different. It's all, no, very different actually. The most showbiz thing I was listening to was the soundtrack to the film Annette, which is quite showbiz. Okay. I don't know if you've seen it. It's um, the Sparks wrote the music and they also wrote the screenplay. It's got Adam Driver and he sings through it's a to it's a singing. Yeah. And as a film, it's extraordinary. Um, 
as a soundtrack, it's amazing. Is it? And I was listening, but it's highly dramatic. <laughs> I listened to it over and over again. I thought it was, I thought it was incredible, really. But um, so I was listening to that's a musical. So I was, I don't listen to a lot of musicals, but I was listening to Annette quite, quite a lot. So there's a lot of inclusion across disciplines, and you yeah. also have stage performances like your witch dance. Yes, I made a mural called Witch Dance, which was commissioned for a very particular mezzanine sort of wall that goes over several sort of mezzanine levels in Sadler's Wells. And then from that, it was based on the idea of a performance, um, taking, borrowing the name from Mary Wigman of a, of a sort of seminal performance she, she did in, in the early 1920s. And then from the work, from the mural, I decided I actually would make a performance. This could, it could be quite interesting. And then the drawing room and I were talking about it and they invited me to, to stage it. So. And is that something you'd like to do more of in future, d doing more cross-disciplinary cross collaboration? Or is your medium really very strongly the pencil? Um, I think the world of the drawings is very, you know, is a very, um, is, is, a, is a place I, I, I think I'll stay and I'll keep, I'll keep, I'll keep making works. But I, for me, they're very three-dimensional whilst I'm making them. Um, and so I often think about making, you know, I often think about film, making a film or, or doing a performative work, but doing it more as an artist and doing it, Whenever I worked in, why I, why I left the theatre and film was that I didn't ever have really incredibly fulfilling experiences with directors, and I think that's why directors and designers always work together if they find that, you know, they find that exchange. You know, you see, you become a, they become a team, and I think I never really found that within that world for myself. I always thought I would do it differently, or I. So I think I'd love myself to go to, to, you know, make a work, make a performance work, maybe perhaps make a film. But it just has, it comes out of the drawings though, it comes out of the, the, the work in the studio. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Donna. This has thank been you. really fascinating and congratulations on this amazing show. It's brilliant. Thank you, Elizabeth. Lovely to speak with you.